Oh yeah, family. We're on the move today. We got some errands to run. I gotta run up to Jenison. Gonna go to Wild Bills, my favorite. Local, not so local. BM. Pick up some stogies for tonight. Maybe one for the ride back. We got a bonfire to go to tonight with some friends. Looking forward to that. Had to work last night. A little longer than I had anticipated. I was only supposed to be there for three hours. I ended up being there for eight. But hey, it has to be paid hourly. That's all I got to say. Holy crap. I tell you what, every time I go to Walmart, well, you guys know. I'm sure you've been to Walmart. You know what's up. All right, family. I'm gonna put a little water in the bottle. It's hot out today. Gotta stay hydrated. Had to get a couple things. Another box fan. Get some airflow in the house. Because, like I said, it's fucking hot out here. Anyway. All right. So, we're in Jenison, just down the road from a local BM. So, we're going to try and make it out of this. Fucking Walmart parking lot without killing anybody here. Is it just me or did somewhere along the line parking spaces get tinier than shit? I don't understand. You used to drive a fucking big old Dodge Ram with an eight foot bed and I could park that thing anywhere I wanted to. These days, shit. Look, if you could park a cereal box. Yeah, it's hot, guys, but it's nice. The breeze is blowing a little bit. That makes it a little bit better. Of course, I got the windows up right now. AC on. Because if you got the windows down, you can't hear me. Not that I'm saying much worth, well, worth hearing anyway, but... So we're gonna go to the B and M, get us a couple of stogies, see what kind of deals they got going on. Wild Bills is usually pretty good. You just gotta, they got a lot of like uh, three for eighteens or buy one get one freeze. Um, they always run a special where if you if you buy, uh, I think it's if you buy five you get one free or if you buy four you get one free something like that. That's a that's an all-time deal. That that's always going. But um, you just gotta watch out for their bargain packs. So like uh, they do, they do the variety packs and stuff, and uh, those aren't those aren't worth it. Um, they put a lot of throwaway sticks in there. So I have definitely learned my lesson on that one. And they usually come with like. They've got like three different levels, I think. Uh, the cheapest one, I think, is $25, and it comes with five cigars and usually some type of torch lighter. Um, cheap torch lighters, too. They don't always work the greatest. Although, if you empty them out, empty them out and uh, put some high-grade butane in there, you're good to go. <laughs> Brother Rob uses propane. That's interesting. Doesn't work good. While we're on that subject, I want to thank all my subscribers. Um, I believe we're up to 40 now. It's a long way from uh, a measly 13. So at least I think it's 40. I think that's what I saw the other day. I don't know. That seems a little high to me. It might not be 40. Hell, I don't know. Maybe it's 20. Anyway, no matter how many of you guys there are, I want to thank you. 
At least somebody likes watching my videos. I do put a little time and effort into making them. It's not just uh, straight camera footage. I mean, I do the camera footage in spurts because if you do it in too long of an interval, it doesn't like to doesn't like to put it into the uh, the app that I use for my video editing. So I try to keep the uh, segments to about eight minutes or so. This fucking asshole. I hate it when people do that. They're in the straight lane and they decide they want to turn, so they try to weasel their way over into the turning lane while they're already parked at the light waiting for it to change. Ridiculous. People need to learn to go back to driving school or something. Nobody cares. But yeah, anyway, so no matter how many subscribers there are, I appreciate you guys. I do put some time and effort into those videos and at least I try. I'm not always the best at it, and I'm not very religious about it, but uh, I do what I can for you guys. I got a lot of uh, a lot of cigars at home that I really want to do reviews on. I don't ever have time. Life of a busy guy, I guess. I'm either working or off doing something. And if I'm not working or whatever, I'm usually sleeping, so... got a two-year-old at home with the wife and we got another one on the way We're right around the corner from Wild Bill's here oh and this guy's gonna drive like a dickhead Here we go. And stop. There's a fucking asshole in a big ass truck, of course. There's always an asshole in a big ass truck. No matter where you are or what you're doing, there's always an asshole in a big ass truck. I gotta find a damn parking spot. Come on, fuck boy. Get in your car. Damn. You'll have to excuse the profanity. The heat makes me a little temperamental. Alright, we're gonna crack these windows. Wait for it to get too hot up in here. Alright, we're gonna venture on in and see what they got. <clears throat> Alright. We are back. I love going to the cigar shop, but I don't. So I love it because I love the smell, I love the experience, I love looking at all the beautiful cigars, and let's face it, I love smoking the cigars too, so, but particularly Wild Bills I hate going into because I always spend more than what I really want to. I love that smell. I usually can't walk out of there without spending at least 50 bucks. Um, so, but we got quite the loot for 50 bucks. It's not like I'm just buying one or two. Um, and this time especially, Found some really nice deals. So, I managed to, and this is something I'm kind of excited about. So this cigar in particular, I have not done a review on yet. Um, but now that I have found more of them, I will. This is the Nappy B by Room 101, the Daruma series. My phone's not really, there we go. The Nappy B. Um, that was supposed to be a uh, exclusive cigar specially made for I believe it was I don't remember the name of the shop but a, a particular shop down in Kansas City I believe um, that was a special one that um, Room 101 had made just for them and it was exclusive but it was such a big hit that they decided to come out with it as regular production so I'm happy that they've gotten these in because I just bought three more uh, I bought three more the last time I was here and then the time before that I bought three as well so this is a very very good cigar Mostly uh, Nicaraguan tobacco, I believe. Maybe a little bit of Honduran in there, but uh, nonetheless, it's a great cigar. Um, this is an old favorite of mine as well. I had this is one of the very first cigars I ever bought, actually, and I liked it so much I've decided to get um, a couple since then. This is the Vintage Cameroon, the 1844 by H. Upman. Vintage Cameroon. It's got that nice uh, cedar sleeve in there, 
not really much on flavor or you know quality wise but it just adds a nice little aesthetic to it it's visually appealing very good cigar as well um so that's a good one um and then of course our old favorites punch brother rob you got me turned on to these man punch signatures i really like this, this is a good smoke so i went ahead and picked one of those up as well um this was something new that I haven't seen in the store before. I've seen it online, um, and the, the, the fella in the, uh, the B&M said that it's not new to them. I just, I guess, I have never seen it before. So this is the, uh, the Hoya Silver. Hoya Silver. Yep. There we go. Um, I'm not very good with my Spanish, but uh, it does say Fabrica Hoya de Nicaragua. And then whatever the SA means. I'm not sure what the SA stands for, but... Uh, Mano and Esteli. So this is uh, Nicaraguan tobacco from Esteli is what that tells me, which is very, very good tobacco indeed. Um, I don't know if I believe them or not. Um, so the uh, full disclosure, the people that work at this particular Wild Bills, um, they um, they tend to favor more of the vape crowd, you know, if you know what I mean. So uh, the younger folks and stuff. So the guys in here are kind of young. I would say can't be much older than me, 27. So... Um, I can't always, I can't always decipher if they're just trying to upsell me, or if they actually know what the fuck they're talking about. But this guy says this has a cherry coconut flavor, so he said it's infused. I've never known Hoya to do infused cigars, so I think he's just blowing smoke up my ass. But uh, in any case, Nicaraguan tobacco from Esteli, you can't go wrong. We'll see how that one favors out. Hopefully, I'll get to do a, um, a review on that one, and. For all you Oliva lovers, I know I'm very a big fan of the Oliva V series, um, especially the Milanio. Um, I found an Oliva V in a Lancero size. So for those of you who might know, not be too uh, up on the, uh, the lingo, so the Lancero is a 7 by 38 So it's a very small ring gauge, but it is a very long cigar. Seven inches, that's about the size of normal Churchills, um, which is a longer, fatter cigar. But, um, so the, the Lanceros, the good thing with the Lanceros is that usually because it's such a small gauge, you have less filler and you actually end up with more wrapper. And the wrapper on the cigar is what actually gives you most of the flavor of the cigar. So this should prove to be a very good flavor bomb indeed. Um, so let's get those back in the bag. I do have the AC on, but I don't want those to, uh, I don't want to lose humidity on those. And once we get them home, they'll go in the Humi, and I'll throw a couple in the, the carry box for tonight. But, uh, I did pick up one more, and that is for the ride home. Um, we're going to go with the, uh, the Punch Grand Puro Nicaragua. Punch Grand Puro. So we're going to crack this bad boy open and see what we got. So this is a Corona, basically a Corona. Um, it's a 4 and 7 eighths by, looks like 46. So a fairly small cigar. Um, should last me the ride home. But it's not going to be like uh, still smoking when I get home type of thing. Hopefully. We are going to take the long way. Um, for those of you in this area, 196 is still shut down at M6, so we're going to avoid that at all costs. Because I am not doing one lane traffic. If I do one lane traffic, I might as well break out that Lancero and smoke that bad boy. So it's a nice roll. It's very firm. So hopefully there's no knots or tight spots because I did not bring my perfect draw. I brought a cutter and I brought a lighter, but I did not bring the perfect draw today. It's kind of lumpy. Um, it's got one nice little lump in here, so hopefully that's not a knot in there as well. It's a nice, sleek looking wrapper. It's kind of shiny, it's got some shine to it. Got a few veins, a seam or two. It's kind of rugged looking. Um, the band's kind of nice. I like the. Uh, I like the contrast of all the colors they got going on. They got the blue, like a sky blue, and then they've got almost like a like a lime green, and then the red 
uh, punch logo on there. It's kind of a nice band. I like that. It's different. Got kind of that barnyard smell to it. Like a mustiness. Getting a lot of sweet tobacco off the foot. A little sweet, a little bit, maybe even just a little bit of green tobacco as well. Let's go ahead and chop her up. Again, as always, not taking a whole lot off, just that little tiny piece. That's kind of tight. I'm going to take off a little bit more. Hopefully the draw's not super tight, because like I said, I came unprepared. Yeah, it's a little tight, but I think we'll be able to make it work. Hopefully. Cold draw, you got some sweet tobacco. That's about it. Just some sweet tobacco, a little bit of mustiness. Not really tasting any pepper. So, let's see how that goes. Today I'm going to be using my little Firebird Single Flame. I knew I was going to be getting a smaller cigar today, so I brought the Single Flame along with me. That way I didn't torch the end of this thing. I love this lighter for a single jet because it's nice, it's single action, or sorry, double action. I got a crack window. It's double action, meaning that when you flick it, it opens and lights at the same time. Um, so that's nice. It's fairly inexpensive. I want to say like maybe eight, ten bucks, something like that. But I love it because of how small the flame is. It's a nice, like, almost pencil tip flame. And you can really touch up the foot of your cigar with it fairly well without torching the crap out of your wrapper. So right off the bat, we got a little bit of spice in there, actually. Not just on the retro hail, but on just the normal um, release. It does have a pretty tight draw, but um, hopefully once it heats up, that'll even out a little bit. Check and see how much gas I had sitting here with the car on the AC. We're good though. We're not on. We're not on W yet. So far, so good. We're gonna go ahead and take off. I'm gonna smoke on this a little bit, and uh, I'll come back with some notes for you. All right, guys. Back so soon? Well, yes, I am. Came out, parking lot, around the corner, and now we're sitting at a train, so hey, it is what it is. Hey, Brother Lee Mac, I got Juan Pablo up here in Michigan. <laughs> For those of you who don't know who Brother Lee Mac is, uh, check out his channel, uh, Lee Mac 912 on YouTube. 
Um, he does cigar reviews. He also gives really good um, life advice, life lessons and stuff like that. Not afraid to speak his mind. He'll tell you how it is. Doesn't sugarcoat it. My kind of guy. Um, I really enjoy his videos. So if you're into the whole cigar review type of thing, check out his channel. I bet you'll like it. So far, this Grand Piero is pretty good. It's got um, it's got some interesting flavor to it. Um, definitely Nicaraguan tobacco. Um, it's got almost like a not really a sweetness, but it leaves like a um, I don't really know how to describe it. It's almost like a sweetness, but it's like a, it leaves a, a sweetness on your tongue. Not like a sugar sweet, um, but like a, I don't know, like an artificial sweet. Not like stevie or something, just uh, I don't know, kind of hard to describe. It also has a slight graphite taste to it, um, which is nothing new for certain tobacco. Usually Nicaraguan tobacco is where I find that slight graphite taste. Or a Habano. There might be some Habano in here. Maybe it's got like a Habano uh, binder or something. I don't know. I'll have to look it up for you guys once uh, we get off the road. I'm trying to be hands-free here. And uh, this train is gone, so we're just waiting on the light now. So far the burn is pretty even. So we'll see. Usually punch has pretty good ratings when it comes to construction, so. Man, look at all these cars. Well, light's green family, so I'm gonna take off. I will be back. We'll talk. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we're back in Holland, um, that's about, uh, oh, I don't know, usually 35 minutes. I think this time it took about 40, 45 minutes just because of traffic. Uh, like I said, M6 is still fucked up, so, or sorry, 196 is still fucked up. So we are just about to the band, which means we're uh, maybe halfway, just shy of that since it's a Corona. Um, I can definitely tell you this, the strength on this little thing is... Media, well, I would say, I'm, I always have trouble with that. What comes first, medium or mild? Um, medium is uh, higher. So we'll say it's about medium to full. Um, you do get, not necessarily a head rush, but uh, you get that nicotine buzz from it. Um, but it's not overpowering. It's not making you sick or anything. Definitely has notes of cedar um, along with, some toasted nut flavors. There's definitely a prominent uh, black pepper spice throughout the entire cigar. Um, that graphite taste is kind of faded away and now we're looking at more of like a, a black pepper and earth type of mix. Still a little spicy on the retro, retro hail, um, but not too overpowering. So. So far, this is a really good smoke. Um, I'm actually sitting outside of another store because Wally World didn't have my Oberon in an unchilled pack, and we all know how it gets when beer gets cold and hot and cold again. So, I'm gonna get off of here. I'm gonna stick this in the window, and hopefully nobody comes along and takes it. Ha <laughs> ha. And uh, we'll run in and grab some Obies, and then uh, we'll head back to the homestead. That's a good cigar. All right, I'll be... All right, guys, we're back at the homestead. This little puppy's gone out, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and set her down. We'll give you the numbers uh, for the price. We'll give it a five. It was a nice little five to six dollar stick. Um, so, decent price in my book. Um, complexity is going to get a three, flavor is going to get a three, fairly average on that front, um, and then the construction is going to get a five as well. 
So it was very well constructed, never had to relight, didn't have to touch it up a whole lot, um, burned very even. So overall, great cigar. Uh, so that puts us at a four out of five. Um, I would highly recommend it. I'm not sure about the larger sizes. Um, as we know, if you change the size, the makeup gets a little different. And now that I'm thinking about it, I had mentioned something about the graphite taste being in the Habano. Um, I just realized that was a s stupid comment to make because uh, this is a Grand Puro, which means that if it's Nicaraguan tobacco, it's, it's all Nicaraguan tobacco. There's no Habano in it. So, uh, but yeah, good stick. Um, getting down towards the end of it, it's going to leave a little bit of like a... Not really grittiness, but it gets a little bitter towards the end. Now I could probably cut it, um, maybe run the perfect draw through and relight, maybe do a purge um, and keep smoking. But it's a little Corona size; it's not really meant to be smoked down to the nub, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw her out, and uh, yeah. So that was the uh, the Grand Puro Nicaraguan from Punch. Um, I highly suggest picking one up if you haven't tried one yet. It's a good smoke. This is Big T signing off. I'm getting ready to go have some fun. Hope you guys are having fun too. Stay safe out there, folks.